Did I show up? You are very nice. I can hear you are. Excellent. Excellent. Put it there. Yeah. I turned it on. Last time, you know, you weren't at your best, and you were talking to me with it off. It which currently off. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, just, I would just leave it on and see what happens. Okay. It um, is now on. Okay. Because I heard you, but then when I went back to listen to the video, you were off mic. Okay. Just a little bit there. We are on early, but all seems to be well. So I see no people yet, but we are five minutes. Always worry right now when there's yeah. no one joining. You know, no one is here yet. Hope that it's working. You know. I know. <laughs> That's the thing. Well, it says it is. It's wait. It says one person has arrived. Perhaps. Good. Welcome. Welcome. I, yes, I see the number one up there. Well, welcome, whoever you are to our live stream. Yes, we are here. Oh, three folks now. We are here early. Yes, and we are. They are here early. We are a bit early. <clears throat> um, it takes me back to my old, ancient, prehistoric days of shortwave listening when you'd You'd tune for a station, and they'd have a little musical thing that repeated over and over. So right. you'd know that you had the right frequency and that they were going to start broadcasting. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, they're called interval signals. They're a thing of the deep, dark past now. Because wow. we all have the Internet, so we don't, yes. have to, don't have to do that other stuff anymore. still do one and I wish I knew how to play one of them that'd be great <laughs> well
has arrived. He says, you sound like one million dollars. Thank you, Dan. You say Dan's here? Yes, he says you sound like one million dollars. Oh, good. So we're good. To, Thank you. Glad to hear that. He's our audio Guru. expert extraordinaire <laughs> yes. out there. Yes. Hey, I uh, I listened to the first two Reminisce videos, Dan. You guys sounded real good yourselves. Oh, yeah. Uh, very nice. I think Linda missed her calling. But then, of course, if she'd have been famous, you'd have never married her. All right. Wait. <laughs> no, then see. He'd have been famous, too, then they'd have met. And well, still that's really true. Dead. That's, that's yeah. a, a very good point. <laughs> see if I can make this a little less awkward. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Uh, we are at one minute. Yes, indeed. It is time to begin. After one o'clock. Um, did you have anybody else join whose name showed up? No, Dan's name is here. It says there's three. Wait a minute. Uh, Dan says, thanks much. We just published a third video last night. I saw that down on the boardwalk. I have not... Uh, I haven't listened to that I one I haven't yet. gotten to listen to it yet. I just noted that it was there. So I'm looking forward to that one. Okay. Well, I don't know that the people who had requests from last time have arrived yet. So I guess we'll skip those. I would because... And come back to them when and if. Yes, I'll let you know if I uh, see person's names. Looking for Philippa and looking for Randall Raines, who, yes. to whom I owe a huge debt of gratitude. Uh, his request from last time led me to one of the funniest songs that I've <laughs> been fortunate to Howard Solomon find. says, hi, George. Hello, Howard. I'm glad you came. Thank you. Meet uh, my wife, Linda. Yes, who's hi. Hi. Off camera, a voice only. Oh, only, yes. But she makes the whole thing go behind the scenes. We, uh, we couldn't do it without her. Um, for those of you who may be new... Um, this thing on my lap is an auto harp. Um, if you're new, you probably, based on the invitations I sent, probably know all about auto harps. So a little inside baseball. This is just a stock Oscar Schmidt OS21C. At least I think it's a 21C. We've never been able to find a model number on it or, uh, or anything. Um, I don't know where it was made or when it was made. Um, the, the button layout is stock. It's just like it comes out of the box. Um, so, with that, we shall begin. Um, <laughs> this is not complicated music. It's just for laughs, okay? Um. I want to sing a song about a guy who moved into a suburban neighborhood where all the houses look the same. It was originally, it was written and performed, let me move that, uh, it was written and performed by Don Bowman on uh, his album Our Man in Trouble sometime in the early 60s, 62 I think. <laughs> I got into the wrong house again last night It surely did give everyone the fright But on my block 
all the houses look alike and I got into the wrong house again last night I bought myself a house here a few months back and it's a darling little house that's a fact but there's 37 others there just exact and I got in the wrong house again last night my neighbor has got this dog about two feet high and this a cute dog little small dog wouldn't hurt a fly but I stumbled in their house by mistake this morning about five and that cute little stupid dog nearly ate me alive I decided I better try the next house in line and I was skipping tippy-toe across the lawn double time have you ever been hit in the throat with a dirty clothesline by the way if you should find a set of teeth out there they're mine my teeth I came in last night and I felt like I had two heads and I was sneaking in the house when I heard this sweet voice say Bill darling why don't you put out the cat and come to bed which shook me pretty good cuz my name's Fred I went up to the next house and rang the bell and this man about eight feet tall answered the door and said what then I said well I was just passing by kind of in the area and I thought I might just visit a spell but he wasn't too neighborly he threw me out the back door and called me some names so I went to sleep in the next house I saw cuz they all look the same I woke up this morning in the doghouse and my head was just pain and there was a silly looking kid looking in the door yelling gravy train I got into the wrong house again last night it surely did give everyone the fright but on my block all the houses look alike and I got into the wrong house again last night we have been joined by Pam Kennedy hey Pam says, good afternoon George and Lynn good show and Dan has a note for you uh, quality is great but the voice is overpowering the harp just a bit if you just move the voice mic away a little it should fix it so okay I like that because I was feeling crowded I had things <coughs> a little bit and thank you thank you thank you sir that's what I made those level adjustments for last night Lynn and then I chickened out oh I see and had you set them back, set back. yeah uh, well okay well let us move along nice to see you Pam I hope you're doing well I'm sorry to hear about your father yes um, and I saw you were at the hospital getting a checkup like a dermatology checkup or something the other day I hope that went well for you um, here is another Don Bowman tune 
It was actually written by a, a, a man named Dick Feller, who wrote a lot of really oddball music, which endears it to me, of course. Um, this is called The Coin Machine Song. Remember? Philippa has joined. Hey, Philippa. Hey, guys. I have a request with your name on it, and we will get to it here very shortly. Um, anyway, you remember when coin machines first came out, the, the technology really wasn't all that perfected. And it may still not be. I haven't, uh, I haven't tried a vending machine in a long time. Inflation being what it is, we don't use coins anymore. But anyway, here's a song called The Coin Machine Song. Now I'm a man who's hard to excite I'm calm and cool, don't get upset But there's one thing that really does get me upset It's them coin machines, those nickel and dimers Them out of order and work one-timers Them no good money grabbing rip-offs I mean, you get a case of the late night munchies, you whip out the money for some peanut crunchies, put it in the slot, make your selection, and nothing. So you cuss and beat it till your hands turn blue, you push it and shove it and kick it with your shoe, finally just walk away while it's blinking, thank you, which is machine talk for, we just stuck it to you, hoss. I'd like to meet the man who invented the coin machine. He must have hated mankind and every other living thing. I'll bet he had a motto on his wall in prose and rhyme, saying you get nothing for a nickel, twice as much for a dime. Well, they'll offer you soft drinks, cigarettes, cigars, barbecue potato chips, and all kind of candy bars, peanuts, popcorn, Cracker Jack, and Red Hots. You can pay a dollar for a quarter comb, get a throwaway razor, a shot of cologne, or a bad shoe shine. Damn thing, even polish your socks. But the worst ones are the ones with the front of glass. You can see what you want, but you can bet your ass there ain't nothing short of a blowtorch going to get nothing out of there. And how about those ones on the men's room wall? You know the ones, boys, you've seen them all. When you lose money in one of them devils, you're just too embarrassed to complain. So all you can do is go home by yourself and talk to it. I'd like to meet the man who invented the coin machine. He must have hated mankind and every other living thing. I'll bet he had a motto on his wall in prose and rhyme, saying you get nothing for a nickel. Twice as much for a dime. I heard a story of a fellow one time who certainly is a hero of mine. He ranks right up there with Chuck Norris, Clint Eastwood, and Steven Seagal. It seems there was a certain soft drink machine. It was rusty and old, cantankerous and mean. Took his money one too many times and his mind snapped. He went, out to his, he went out to his car, reached under the seat, pulled out a 45, clean and neat, said, hand it over, son, it's your last chance. He shot that machine about four or five times right under that blink and have a Coke sign. It coughed up $400 and died. The judge said it was self-defense. I'd like to meet the man who invented the coin machine. He must have hated mankind and every other living thing. I'll bet he had a motto on his wall in prose and rhyme Saying you get nothing for a nickel, twice as much for a dime You get nothing for a nickel, twice as much for a dime Both of my sisters have arrived. Nan. Hey, Beck, Nan, Nan how are you? Hi, glad to see you again. And Becky says, hi, I'm finally logged in. Good. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's good to have you. Yes, sir. We need we need all the Trekkies we can get that's for this, true. For this next yes. song that's coming up. Um, this was done by uh, a, a lady by the name of Leslie Fish. Um, she sings filk music. 
She also sings folk music, but she sings filk, which is music with a folk flavor about fictional topics, as near as I can figure that's what it means. Dan said, I might have a new favorite, trying to get my breath back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> if Randall Raines shows up, and even if he doesn't, I got to do this song he requested. Uh, y- y- there, are, uh, there are a couple of good candidates, Dan, for sure. <laughs> I thought I had played that one, but maybe it was on uh, one of the get-togethers that you missed. Okay. Let's figure out a better way to do this. Anyway, here is a song called Band Band from Argo. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Beck said, had to get a new Apple password, a new email password, then a new Facebook password one of those days. Oh, man. Goodness. Appreciate your dedication to getting here. <laughs> I, yeah, absolutely. I won't wow. ask what happened, but I am curious. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a call later. <laughs> Maybe we can keep that from happening in future. Wow. <laughs> When we pulled in, when he, when we pulled into Argo's port for a needed R and R, the crew set out to investigating every joint and bar. We had high expectations of their hospitality. We found too late that wasn't geared for spacers such as we, and we're banned from Argo, everyone. Banned from Argo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. But Argo doesn't want us anymore. Our captain's tastes were simple, but his methods were complex. We found him with five partners, each from a different world and sex. The shore police were on their way. We had no second chance. We beamed him up in the nick of time in the remnants of his pants. And we're banned from Margo, everyone banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. Now Argo doesn't want us anymore. Our engineer would yield to none from putting down the brew. He outdrank seven spates marines and a demolition crew. The navigator didn't win but he outdrank almost all. And now they've got our shuttlecraft on the roof of City Hall. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. Now Argo doesn't want us anymore. Our cool proper first officer was drugged with something green. Hauled into an alley where he suffered things obscene. He sobered up in sick bay and he's none the worse for wear. Except he somehow taught the bridge computer how to swear. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for six long days or more. And Margo doesn't want us anymore. Our chief nurse disappeared a while in a major dope bazaar, buying an odd green potion guaranteed to cause kung far. She returned home with without a uniform, with an oddly cheerful heart, and a painful way of walking with her feet a yard apart. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. Now Argo doesn't want us anymore. 
Our lady of communications won a ship-wide bet by getting into the planet's main communication net. Now every time someone calls up on an Argo telescreen, the flesh is there, but the clothes they wear are nowhere to be seen. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for six months, for, for just three days or four. Now Argo doesn't want us anymore. A doctor loves humanity, but his private life is quiet. The shore police arrested him for inciting whores to riot. We found him at the city jail, locked on and beamed him free. Intact except for hickeys and six kinds of VD. And we banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent a jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. Now Mar Argo doesn't want us anymore. Our helmsman loves exotic plants, and the plants all love him too. He took some down with, on leave with him, because he wondered what they'd do. Till the planetary governor called and swore upon his life. A gang of plants entwined the house and then seduced his wife. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent the jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. Now Argo doesn't want us anymore. A gang of Klingons landed, but nobody seemed to care. They stomped into the nearest bar to announce that they were there. Half our crew was busy inside and invited them to play. But the Klingons only looked at us and turned and ran away. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent the jolly shore leave there for just three days or four. Now Argo doesn't want us anymore. Our crew is Starfleet's finest and our record is our pride. But when we play we tend to leave a trail a mile wide. So we're sorry about the wreckage and the riots and the fuss. But we're quite sure that planet will not soon forget us. And we're banned from Margo, everyone. Banned from Margo just for having a little fun. We spent the jolly shore leave there for six months, for just three days or four. But Argo doesn't want us anymore. But Argo doesn't want us anymore. I wonder why. that that's an interesting genre filk music yes um i, I find that she did concept interesting. she did a whole album the album's called minus 10 and counting all about the space program that's not filk that's folk uh -huh. from the first mercury flights all the way up through the shuttles and wow. voyager and all that um she does a lot of uh stuff for pensic type gatherings um, oh, she's, she's very interesting. Philippa said, I'm here, was in your shot, just got back. Oh, so. okay. All right. Let me see if what is next. Okay. Um, this is... Becky said, that was great. Nan said, love it. I did too. That was so cool. I thought you Trekkies would uh, <laughs> yeah. would get a big kick out of that. I I did when I first of all I couldn't quite figure out what the deal was, and then I said, you know what? That's great. I got to <laughs> yes. learn that. Yes. Dan said, "Awesome." There are ten verses to that, and. Uh, it was quite a chore to learn them all. I didn't quite get it done. But. Philippa said, good job on it, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Here is another Dick Feller tune um, that I really like and that I've played for many, many years. It's called Uncle Hiram and the Homemade Beer.
Well, I was just a boy at the time when this drinking uncle Hiram of mine decided he'd make up a batch of homemade beer. Don't tell a soul, he said to me, but I've come across this recipe that says for pennies a day I can drink all year. So I searched the alleys behind the bars for empty jugs and mason jars, and he sneaked them down to his basement brewery. He measured out yeast and sugar and hops, and he said to me as we seal the tops, for goodness sake, don't tell your Aunt Marie. She'd say, hey there, Hiram, what's going on down there? There's some peculiar odor coming up the basement stairs. Go on back to your sewing, hon, I'm varnishing a chair. The time my Uncle Hiram made his famous homemade beer. Well, we let her sit for a month or so, and me and Uncle sneaked down below, figuring it was about time to give it a try. I was standing there at the foot of the stairs, and Uncle Hiram was checking the wares, and all of a sudden, two bottles just blew sky high. Well, the jars went crash, the lids went plunk, and Hiram died behind a trunk as the beer began to spew out on the floor. Uncle yelled, don't mind me, save yourself, as fast as I could, I ran up the steps, and out of breath, I quickly slammed the door. Aunt Marie cried out, what is it, dear? And I said, it's Uncle's homemade beer. It's blowing up and got Uncle trapped down there. She said, beer, beer, I declare, hire me, you come up out of there. But the sound of exploding beer was all we could hear. Hey there, Hiram, what's going on down there? There's some peculiar odor coming up the basement stairs. Go on back to your sewing, hon, I'm varnishing a chair. The time my Uncle Hiram made his famous homemade beer. It sounded like a war for a day and a night. Them bottles just blew up left and right till finally we just heard one here and there. Aunt Marie took a comforter and holding it up in the front of her with me behind, we went on down the stairs. Well, the place was a mess to say the least. The walls were sticky and it smelled like yeast and the glass and the lids and the beer were all around. It had been quite a battle, there weren't no doubt. But when we commenced to looking about, Uncle Hiram was nowhere to be found. Auntie cried out, Hiram, oh poor dear, he's been killed by a jar of beer. I warned him a drink, but he never listens to me. Then up popped the lid on the antique trunk, and there soaked in beer, blind, running drunk, was the late lamented love of Aunt Marie. And he said, Hello. Rather than see it all go to waste, I figured I might as well give it a little taste. I reckon I tasted about 43 jars of beer. Here. Y'all just go on, cause... I'm standing right down here. Hey there, Hiram, what's going on down there? There's some peculiar odor coming up the basement stairs. Go on back to your sewing, hon, I'm varnishing a chair. The time my Uncle Hiram made his famous homemade beer. Amber is here. She said hi, everyone. And Nan hey, said Amber. another favorite. And Benji joined and he said hello, everyone. Benji, good to see you. And Philippa said another favorite. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been playing that song forever. And um, Linda Saviard, one of my favorites. Hello, Linda. Hello, Linda. Nice job on your music. Dan, an all time favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I um a neighbor said love it. A neighbor of ours had that on a cassette. And he'd recorded it on a real cheap recorder with a microphone held up to a record player. Um he recorded the whole album and I got him to lend me the tape long enough to make a copy and I learned the song from that tape in 19 19- 74 or 5. And Let me interrupt you for a second. Howard Solomon said, love the homemade beer song. I've had root beer explode. It's loud. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have an experienced yes. brewer on, in our midst here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's also messy. 
Uh, <laughs> but it was, oh, golly. It was only like four or five years ago that I learned who wrote the thing. Uh, the only time I'd ever heard it was on that tape. Philip said, yeah, tell them about the neighbor. The neighbor. The neighbor, dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> that doesn't ring a bell, Flip. I'm sorry. Old age. I know. Takes its toll, you know. Um, and that one's uh, that one's one of my favorites. Come on, Randall, show up. <laughs> I want to do this song. The fridge. The fridge song. The fridge song. Yeah. He I requested the fridge song. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Philippa said saved. Is it X T I A N, et cetera? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm still not. Uh, I'm still in the dark. Yeah. Anyway, from drinking and carousing and, and chemical or brewing disasters. I want to... Uh, Howard I'll, said, um, messy part is getting the drips off the ceiling. Yes. Yes, that is. I can, uh, I can understand that. Yes. Uh, I made a little root beer on, on myself, but none of mine <laughs> exploded, fortunately. Um, most people... I, of course, I knew, I, I knew a couple of old timers. I knew an old moonshiner. Yeah. Uh, and I knew a, a couple of people who brewed beer. And one of the mistakes that amateurs make is that they store the beers upright. And you can't do that. You've got to put them down on their sides or at a slant so that the pressure can't concentrate at the cap. Um, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. And uh, you want to put some cardboard or something between each of the bottles so that if one explodes, <laughs> the glass won't break two others and cause a uh, a massive it's chain kind of reaction. Domino effect. Yeah. Not not like in the right. picture. Right. <laughs> right. Kind of a chain reaction thing. Philippa uh -huh. so said, uh, "X T I A N equals Christian contradiction." You told me that's what the neighbor was oh yeah he was um his, his name was paul thompson god rest his soul and oh yeah he was uh he was uh he was an anachronism he would he would have been fine in the 19th century he was very pious and 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 holier than now and he'd give you the shirt off his back but he also loved to drink beer anyway there's a lot of friends in sca that brew South Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina. South Carolina. Okay. Um, here's a song about a teenage romance, tragedy, loss, done by the Smothers Brothers. So if you're old enough to remember them, you know it's not quite what it seems. As I was walking by the shore, I happened there to see A woman's form lying there as still as still could be The dress she wore was gingham blue, her hair all tumbled down It might have been my own true love, my sweetheart Jenny Brown Her face was turned into the sand, twas who I could not tell. But on her hand a high school ring, a ring I knew too well. My heart stood still, I grasped her arm, and then I turned around. Oh, alas, it was my own true love, my sweetheart, Jenny Brown. I stared into her lovely face, a face that used to clown. I saw one eye a flicker, 
then wink and open round. Ha ha, she laughed and jumped up tall. I'll bet you thought I'd drown. What a rotten sense of humor has my sweetheart, Jenny Brown. I had SCA wrong. Philip explained it's uh, Society for Creative. Anachronisms. Yes. Yes. And sponsors. I, I so I'm heard sorry the, about that. I, I did not know. I didn't either. <laughs> I I did hear the the Leslie Fish song, uh, 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 the true story, where she got hassled by the FBI because they thought it was the Society for Creative Anarchism. <laughs> Gotta read the. Gotta read all the letters, folks. Uh, but it makes sense that those guys would brew. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Little mead never yes. hurt anyone. Here is a song about a working man who just had a really bad day. <laughs> Dear sir, I write this note to you to tell you of me plight For at the time of writing I am not a pretty sight Me body is all black and blue, me face a deathly grey And I write this note to tell you why I'm not at work today while working on the fourteenth floor, some bricks I had to clear. But to toss them down from such a height was not a good idea. Me foreman wasn't very pleased, he is an awkward sod. And he said I'd have to cart them down the ladders in me hod. Well, shifting all those bricks by hand, it was so very slow. So I hoisted up a barrel and secured the rope below. But in me haste to do the job, I was too blind to see that a barrel full of building bricks is heavier than me. And so when I untied the rope, the barrel fell like lead. And clinging tightly to the rope, I started up instead. I shot up like a rocket till to my dismay I found. Halfway up I met the bloody barrel coming down. The barrel broke me shoulder as to the ground it sped. And when I reached the top, I banged the pulley with me head, still clinging tightly, numbed with shock from this almighty blow. The barrel spilled out half the bricks, fourteen floors below. And when the bricks had fallen from the barrel to the floor, I then outweighed the barrel and so started down once more. Still clinging tightly to the rope, me body racked with pain. Halfway down I met the bloody barrel once again. The farce of this collision halfway down the office block caused multiple contusions and a nasty state of shock. Still clinging tightly to the rope, I fell toward the ground and landed on the broken bricks the barrel had scattered round. I lay there groaning on the ground, I thought I'd passed the worst. But the barrel hit the pulley wheel and then the bottom burst a shower of bricks rained down on me i didn't have a hope for as i lay there bleeding i let go the blooming rope 
I lay the groaning on the oh, see. The barrel being unsecured started down once more and landed right across me as I lay there on the floor. It broke three ribs in my left arm, and I can only say that I hope you'll understand why Murphy's not at work today. Saw quite a few ha ha and, and love emojis <laughs> going us up in the air on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, you know, every every verse goes by, you think, well, it can't get any worse. <laughs> it's a poor guy. And then it that does. He says, OMG, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lulu. There's Lulu. This is Lulu, my faithful guide dog who is really going stir crazy yeah. and is trying to figure out what in all the world she did wrong to cause me not to want to go with her anywhere anymore. Right. Yeah. Now this is hard on the guide dog. Yeah, because they're 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 built. Their whole life is going places. Yeah. And when they can't, they don't like it. Becky says that's a new one for me. Giggling, ah, giggling. good. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a good one. That's a Ray Stevens tune. It's an old joke, put to music. Um, the closest I can trace it was a 1918 joke book. And, uh, Beck, your dad had it as a letter written to an insurance company. That's the first time I ever heard it. He did. He really, he did. He had a piece of paper. You know, you know how right. back in the seventies people used to circulate jokes on pieces of paper. Yeah. Well, he had, he had one of those that he'd picked up somewhere in his travels and he read it. And it was it was that basic joke. Yes. Um, that's where I first heard it. It's so funny. It is. <laughs> I think so too. Philippa had some information about SCA, but some of it's scrolled off. We can go back and. I will go back and review that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't get. I don't know how this all works to get it back. So, and I don't want to miss any that are coming up. <clears throat> but we'll go back and look at that. Definitely. I try to go back and reply to comments yes. after after the show is over. Um, okay. Um, this next song was done, written and done by a man. It's one of the strangest sense of humor that I've ever heard in my life. Um, his name is Haywood Banks. She's, Philippa said she used it in selling insurance, got it from a dentist policy holder. And Nan said, yes, I remember Dad reading that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh oh. Reconnection successful. Okay, we, we we kind of dropped out there for a minute, folks. I okay, hope. I think we're still here because I have the end live video. Yeah. And, okay, we're still we're live. We're still here. I don't know what happened. We kind of we that. lost our stream for a, a minute there. Linda said, "I love Haywood Banks." Yeah, he is uh, definitely a different breed of cat. Yes. Um. <laughs> You might hear bits of conversation As you pass through public places Some loud talker on a cell phone Or a tiff at the next table Most washed by and not remembered But one evening last December I passed two women talking by The front door of my hotel I stopped and thanked them by the curb The moment that I heard their words I said it was the finest line of eavesdrop I've ever overheard Their words stuck inside my head So I wrote down the words they said And with a hotel pen I wrote And then they had to taser her again 
Then they had to taser her. First time wasn't phasing her. Whatever she did, she did it twice. Who was that gal? Why weren't she nice? They zapped her once. She improvised a tricky breakdance jazzercise. She didn't take the hint, cause then they had to taser her again. Those swirling words would not relent, speculating about the incident. And it's gonna drive me crazy, cause I never know the truth. Were there warrants unresolved? How much alcohol was involved? And did her stepson remember to return to her trailer the next day to feed her snake? Then they had to taser her. First time wasn't phasing her. Whatever she did, she did it twice. Who was that gal? Why weren't she nice? Her hair, it spiked. She spilled her bong. They upped the volts. She soiled her thong. She didn't take the hint, cause then they had to taser her again. No, she didn't get the drift, cause then they had to taser her again. We had comments saying we were back. Becky said still here, and oh, Philippa good, good, said good, good, you're good. here. So that's very helpful. Thank very you. Very helpful. Yes, Thank indeed. You. Thank you. Um, we kind of dropped out for a minute there. Um, okay. I wonder if I could prevail upon you to you get me would. another Wait a glass second, of... I have Possibly another comment. Yes, Dan. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, stand by. I'm going to move on to the next song because I think you've heard it before. Excuse myself. There you go. Well... I don't know if any of you uh, know someone like this, but um, I think most of you have heard this one. If there is an analog girl out there, she must be having a pretty tough time right now. She ain't got no cell phone, you gotta call her when she's home, all of her clocks have got hands. She ain't, don't try to email, you got a snail mail, She's got. you gotta take pen in hand. Ones and zeros, zeros and ones, she'll have none of that virtual fun, she's a real deal old fashioned analog in a digital world She gets online out in her backyard hanging up her old blue jeans She's got all the memory that she can live with She really hates drum machines Ones and zeros zeros and ones She'll have none of that virtual fun. She's a real deal old fashioned analog girl in a digital world.
out in her garden. She's got a website that sparkles in the morning dew. She's got a mouse in her pocket, spamming a can. What's an analog girl to do? Ones and zeros, zeros and ones. She'll have none of that virtual fun. She's a real deal, old-fashioned analog girl in a digital world. Just in time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On this end. Oh, okay. So on hers, she didn't. Well, we got a nasty, nasty gram from my right. streaming program right. saying so that it, it had did. disconnected. So maybe it reconnected before the buffer emptied, or some yes. geekified thing some like geekified that. Thing. <laughs> you know, I can, I can tear a computer down and replace just about everything in it. I can install any operating system you want. I can probably clear up any Windows bug or Linux bug in creation, but I cannot get along with Facebook. It's maddening. It's like I go into the twilight zone. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, that's why I don't post as much as, uh, as I'd like. It's just uh, I, a very strange environment for me. Dan said... Uh, you're transmitting just fine here. That's good. Good. Yeah, that thanks for the report. Glitch or blip thanks for the uh, thanks for the five nine nine, Dan. Yes. Sol fine business, solid copy. Yes. All right. Here's uh, here's another one from Ray Stevens, called "Don't Go Near the Water with a Man Too Drunk to Fish." Good advice. Beck says there was a little blip. But that was all. Okay. Okay. Me and this buddy Harold of mine decided we'd go fishing one time, so we drove to the lake with my brand new bass boat. I bought the fishing poles, the pork and beans, the saltine crackers, the canned sardines, and Harold brought all the booze one man could tow. I was loading the boat and filling the tank and trying to get that motor to crank, and Harold just sat there sipping on a long neck beer. I was steering the boat and tying the plugs, and Harold was drinking moonshine straight from the jug, and he sang Melancholy Baby before we left the pier. Oh, never go fishing with a man who has been drinking, cause things just might not work out like you wish. Leave that fool at home to drink, he'll be just as happy fishing in the kitchen sink. Don't go near the water with a man too drunk to fish. I was concentrating, per perfecting my cast, trying to land me a trophy bass, and Harold was having trouble trying to find the lake. Next to him, right by his feet, was an anchor line coiled nice and neat. Harold saw it, turned white as a ghost, and hollered, Snake! He jumped straight up and started to yell. I said, Sit down, Harold, and behave yourself. Can't you see that ain't nothing but a piece of rope? But he was scared to death, plumb out of his mind, trying not to get bit by that anchor line, and he grabbed my shotgun and blew a hole in the bottom of the boat. Harold! Never go fishing with a man who has been drinking Cause things just might not work out like you wish Leave that fool at home to drink He'll be just as happy fishing in the kitchen sink Don't go near the water with a man too drunk to fish 
Now too drunk to fish is too drunk to swim. I was dog paddling and dragging him, and I finally found us a sandbar big enough for two. And it was long after dark when that helicopter came with that big blue searchlight calling our names, and Harold saw it and said, Lord, is that you? Then Harold knelt in that heavenly glow and said, Lord, you know, I ain't ready to go, but if you'll pass me by tonight, I will reform. Well, they dropped a raft and I paddled us home, and Harold hasn't touched a drop from that moment on. Sometimes the Lord works in mysterious ways his miracles to perform. Never go fishing with a man who has been drinking, cause things just might not work out like you wish. Leave that fool at home to drink, he'll be just as happy fishing in the kitchen sink. Don't go near the water with a man too drunk to fish. No, don't go near the water with a man too drunk to fish. <laughs> what do you think the insurance folks would do about that, Philippa? <laughs> Will the guy get his bass boat paid for, or will he get gigged for taking an idiot to sea? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Full disclosure, I bet he gets no cover. <laughs> yeah, I would think they'd probably find a good reason not to. Uh... Linda said, good advice indeed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Nan said she had no problems hearing us. No problems here, she said. Good, good. And uh, Becky said, that's a good one. I like that one. Howard, I hope you're still around. I, I hope there are other people watching that are not commenting. And if you are watching, drop us a comment. Let us know who you are and and where you're at and, and all that. And um, If you like this, please follow the page. Um, there, I don't post a lot. I don't post a lot anywhere on Facebook, but no. this this particular page is dedicated strictly to the streams and the posts related to them. So you'll see invitations <clears throat> and and um, you can comment the videos, and you can comment and and all of that. But there's not going to be a lot of stuff on here that'll clutter up your newsfeed. So yeah. follow the page, and uh, you'll get you'll get. Uh, a post whenever we do one of these. We usually try to do one a month. This one's a little bit rushed because everybody's shut in, and I, I just kind of wanted to see if well, I could yeah. Uh, yeah. bring a smile to your face on a Sunday afternoon here. Okay. Um, I think we've we've done enough drinking and carousing around here for a little while Let's see if I can uh, moisten my throat here Dan uh, <clears throat> Dan and Linda Detroit Michigan salute <laughs> thank oh, you oh yes you are prophetic Dan you will find out what I mean later <laughs> how did you know <laughs> I do not know. Anyway, I think we've we've had enough partying and drinking and carousing around for one concert. Uh, Nan Nan's smiling here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I I think maybe we better sober up with a with a nice hot cup of coffee, a proper cup of coffee. Ziggy uh. Harp Dust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After Ivan Stiles has finished his concert, I've come over to you. I'm joining your show from Germany. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ziggy. I'm glad mm -hmm. you joined us. And I hope the uh, I hope Ivan's concert was good. I hope he leaves it up. I want to hear it. I didn't know that he had scheduled something at this time or I would have I would have worked with him and coordinated and, and rescheduled mine. Because uh, I would have liked to have heard that. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some other people who will uh, will come over. Um, Ziggy, this is a stock Oscar Schmidt twenty one OS twenty one C. 
um, that I'm playing. Uh, and I play it lap style. Uh, the button layout, it's just like it came out of the box. I haven't changed it at all. Um, simple music that I'm playing today. I'm not playing anything really complicated. It's, it's all designed to, uh, to make people laugh. Um, so anyway, this is uh, called A Proper Cup of Coffee. The first uh, earliest recording of it I heard was on an old scratchy 78 RPM record made in 1928. So I don't know who, um, who actually, actually did the beginning, you know, the original. Um, and this is kind of the sing-along portion of the show. Um, <laughs> I was a kid during the folk music era, you know. Michael Rowe, your boat ashore, and all that, where you, everybody would sing along. So I kind of like to do that, too. So this is a sing-along part, and uh, the chorus comes along, and, and, and y you can learn the chorus. It's <laughs> not a problem. And then you can sing it along with me, you know, right where you are, and, and we can all have a feeling of togetherness and comradeship yeah. and, and all of that. Here it is. A sultan sat on his oriental mat in his harem in downtown Persia. He took a sip of coffee, just a drip, and he said to his servant, Curse ya! Ah, oh, curse ya, curse ya, curse ya! Oh, that's the worst cup of coffee in Persia. Here's your part. Ready? So... All I want is a proper cup of coffee Made in a proper cup of coffee pot I may be off my dot But I want a proper coffee in a proper copper pot Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots They are no use to me If I can't have a proper cup of coffee In a proper cup of coffee pot I'll have a cup of tea Got it? Well, join right in In days of old, when knights and men were bold, and whiskey was much cheaper, Ben Turpin rode his to a coffee shop and showed his pistols to the keeper. And he said, stand and deliver, can't you see I'm all a quiver? Cause, here it is. All I want is a proper cup of coffee Made in a proper cup of coffee pot I may be off my dot But I want a proper coffee in a proper copper pot Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots They are no use to me If I can't have a proper cup of coffee In a proper cup of coffee pot I'll have a cup of tea I didn't hear anyone singing, come Amber on Amber says, nope, no way <laughs> <laughs> It's easy Bonaparte found that he was in the cart when he lost that Waterloo fight. He gave his sword to Wellington, my lord, and he said, You British can't have fight. Now we're here at Waterloo, sir. Tell me what am I having with you, sir? Cause... One more chance. All I want is a proper cup of coffee Made in a proper cup of coffee pot I may be off my dot But I want a proper coffee in a proper copper pot Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots They are no use to me If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a Proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot I'll have a cup of tea See, I messed it up too <laughs> that's, that's part of that comrade and fellowship thing I, right, I did right. that on purpose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> King Solomon and his queen would carry on, so we read in the ancient scandals. He gave her lots of silver coffee pots with diamond legs and handles and said the queen of Sheba, I'd rather have any old tea bag cause... Last chance. All I want is a proper cup of coffee made in a proper cup of coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a proper coffee in a proper copper pot. Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots, they are no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. 
All I want is a proper cup of coffee made in a proper cup of coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a proper coffee in a proper cup of pot. Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots, they are no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. All I want is a proper cup of coffee made in a proper cup of coffee pot. I may be off my dot, but I want a proper coffee in a proper cup of pot. Iron coffee pots and tin coffee pots, they are no use to me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A proper cup of coffee. Yes. I heard that on a radio program called The Dr. Demento Show. Man says, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dr. Demento, eh? Yeah. Haven't heard that name in a while. Hello again. So quit playing buttons and take me for a ride in our or Jeep. Or something. Or yes. something. Or play. Yeah. Nope. That's all. You can't get more things. Linda said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Time out. Yes, much emojis coming up of happy and Yeah. Good girl. That's all. That's all. Um people ask me George my name's George. They said, George, why don't you write your own stuff? You know, the stuff you do is really funny, but how come you don't write your own songs? Well, I have a, a real problem writing my own songs. And here's a song about the problems I have writing my own songs that was written by someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write it. You didn't know. Okay. This is a, 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 another uh, one by Don Bowman, one of my comedic heroes. Ziggy has a message. I'm not really new to the auto harp. I started my harp journey nearly 40 years ago. Your lap style way of playing with resting your right hand joint on your left one is familiar to me from the M lag champion Harvey Wagner's playing and a lovely dog you have. Thank you Ziggy. That's Lulu. Her name is Lulu. And uh, by golly, you started playing the harp uh, just a little bit after I did. So we, we are contemporaries. And it encourages me to know that a contest champion plays this way. Yes. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, that, uh, and I know Harvey. I worked with Harvey on the uh, uh, Zoom group. We were trying to get an open mic thing together, a virtual open mic. And... Uh, didn't it didn't quite work out for us but uh some of the people have have uh had good luck with jam kazam but thanks for introducing yourself ziggy and and uh i hope you'll follow the page as i said earlier if, if you follow the page there aren't very many posts on here it doesn't clutter your news feed i this page is strictly dedicated to these streams and if you know anybody else who uh, might like it um you know share it with them uh, be be glad to meet new people and have them come here down home in Alabama to visit a spell with us on Sunday afternoons. Yes. We do one of these about once a month and and uh, really enjoy them. And uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of good comments. So you know, by all means, uh, drop by again and see us. And feel free to comment on anything that uh, takes your fancy. Um, so this song is. By Don Bowman. And here it is. It's called I Never Did Finish That Song. Oh, I never did finish that song. Their parents would never let them marry. Because she came from the wrong side of town. In a final embrace, you could see them. Standing there on the ledge, looking down. 
They vowed they would always be together and that neither would ever love again. And holding each other so tightly, they kissed, they kissed, and then... And then the telephone rang, I broke a guitar string, and a friend with a bottle came along. We both got a little high, started telling lies, and I never did finish that song. No, I never did finish that song. Johnny was the pride of the beach. All the surfer girls knew him on sight. Seemed like everything was going his way until that dark and fateful night. He swam out to where the big breakers were, started to ride the waves in. For the first time, he noticed the ship in his path. <laughs> he waved to the crowd, and then... And then the stove blew up. This big hootsmack truck came crashing right through my chartreuse wall. The clock struck ten, the whole roof caved in, and I never did finish that song. Really, I never did finish that song. Old Jed was a faithful hired man. For years he plowed the old farm with the wrinkles of time etched on his face and a hula girl <laughs> etched on his arm. But old age had made Jed careless and his years finally came to an end. He walked behind a mule, the mule that he thought was tame. The mule took aim and then... And then the sky got black and the wind is cracked and a big tornado come along. Boy, the whole house rocked and the landlord knocked and I never did finish that song. No, I never did finish that song. I promised myself when I started this song that I'd write it all the way to the end. But I never did. <laughs> By golly, just never got around to it. Ziggy Harpda said, I've been reading about the Zoom project on cyber pluckers. Oh, yes. Um, we're going to figure it out. We've got some, some pretty good technical talent on that uh, as well. It's, it's interesting. Um, my brother Dan uh, made this observation many years ago. It's amazing how many people who are into computers heavily are also heavily into music yes it's remarkable the uh the correlation kathy uh, Brittell enjoying the recorded video oh okay this one's live kathy yeah, this one's live this one's not recorded and welcome yes i'm honored by your presence i really am uh thank you for for dropping in Okay. Let's see what is next. Ah, yes. Well, maybe we should mend our wicked ways and and get right with God. No, no. I, I was just checking. Okay. And not to say we shouldn't get right with God. <laughs> mend our wicked ways. Yeah, well, we should. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Now I do have a... Kathy said, oh, I'm honored to be here. Math and music, yes. <laughs> <She said. laughs> That's true. True, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're definitely correlated. Um, this is a song by, uh, we've had several of, uh, by this man so far. He is one of my comedic heroes as well. His name's Ray Stevens. And this is called the Mississippi Squirrel Revival. <laughs> When I was young, I'd take a trip every summer down to Mrs. Hip to visit my granny in her antebellum world. I'd run barefooted all day long, 
climbing trees as free as a song. One day, I happened to catch myself a squirrel. I stuffed him down in an old shoe box and punched a couple holes in the top, and when Sunday came, I snuck him into church. I was all the way back in the very last pew, showing him off to my good buddy Hugh when that squirrel got loose and went totally berserk. What happened then is hard to tell. Some said it was heaven, some thought it was hell, but the fact that something was among us was plain to see. As the choir sang, I surrender all, the squirrel crawled up Harv Newman's coveralls. Harv leaped to his feet and said, something got a hold on me. Yow! The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting hallelujah. Harv hit the aisles dancing and screaming. Some thought he had religion. Some thought he had a demon. And Harv thought he had a weed eater loose in his throat of the looms. He fell to his knees to plead and beg, and the squirrel crawled out of his breeches leg, unobserved, to the other side of the room. All the way back to the Amen pew, where sat Sister Bertha, better than you, observing all the commotion with sadistic glee. <laughs> you should have seen the look in her eyes when that squirrel jumped her garters and crossed her thighs. She jumped straight up and said, Lord, have mercy on me. As the squirrel did lapse inside her dress, she began to cry and then to confess to sins that would make a sailor blush with shame. She told of gossip and church dissension, but the thing that got the most attention is when she talked about her love life and started naming names the day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting, Hallelujah! Seven deacons and the pastor got saved, and $50,000 was raised, and 20 volunteered for missions to the Congo on the spot. And even without an invitation, there were at least 500 rededications, and we all got rebaptized, whether we needed it or not. You've read this Bible story, I guess, of how he parted the water for Moses to pass. All oh, the miracles God hath wrought in this old world. But the one I'll remember to my dying day is how he put that church back on the narrow way with a half-crazed Mississippi squirrel. The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting, Hallelujah! The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting, Hallelujah! Yeah, they were jumping pews and shouting, Hallelujah! Yep. Many happy ha-ha and like and love emojis floating up through. Oh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, I like that song. That's one of my favorites. Ray Stevens yep. <laughs> just has my kind of sense of humor. I've got one more of his, I think, coming up here. Hi, Lulu. She wants you to quit playing buttons. She does. Flip us at an old favorite. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that one. I know. I know. You're all right. You're a good dog. You have to wait. Yeah. This will all end and you'll get to go somewhere again. You didn't do anything wrong. No, you didn't. You're a good girl. 
Okay. Hang on here. We have. Uh, come on. I thought I had another camera. Wait a second. I did. Uh, Kathy said, "I'll be." Uh, so you know some. Uh, I'll bet you know some Tom Lehrer songs. <laughs> yes, I do, but I haven't got them worked up well enough to I'm play one. Down, so. But if you will, um, if you're free for the next one of these, and I try to do one about every month, this okay. one's kind of a special. Can we let people know ahead of time. And um, if you'll follow this page, Kathy, um, you'll get the invites, and that's all you get from here. This page, this is a public page, and it's dedicated to my streams. Um, I don't, I don't post anything else here, so it won't clutter your feed. Um, follow the page and I'll, now that I know it's okay to do, I will also post invitations on the auto harp group. I didn't want to get booted off for that because there was something about self promotion in the rules and I wasn't sure, uh, how that worked. Uh, so. And I have one from Philippa that said, ah, Facebook. Watch this video with Genesee County, uh, New York virtual garage sale and pass it along, end quote. And let's see. And also sliding down the razor blade of life. Yes. Soon we'll be sliding down the razor blade of life. Who did that? Tom Lehrer. That was Tom Lehrer. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Yes. <laughs> Hearts full of something, hearts full of truth, two parts gin and one part vermouth. Um, yeah. That guy has an, an incredible... And he, his way, vocabulary, the say. stuff that he rhymes. I know. <laughs> I mean, his music is pretty simple. Um, you know, you can... You can uh, I, did his, I did one of his at Christmas for my Christmas show. And by the way, also there, if you want to go back and get more of this craziness, all of the ones <laughs> that I've done are still up. This is the 11th one in the series. And you'll see how I um, evolved technically. Um, I worked really hard to get this done because as uh, Kathy knows, the auto harp is kind of a tough instrument to, to stream because it has such a dynamic range of frequencies. Um, I, I struggled for uh, well over a year before I could get audio that I thought I liked well enough to, to do. But I'll, I'll put some Tom Lehrer together for you next time, Kathy. Sure will. Um, there's there's a lot of good Tom Lehrer out there, and I haven't done enough of him. All right. Philip also said first was an idiot message from Facebook. I think that's part of the other message. She was. Okay. Um, I want to talk about thrill seekers. We've had people getting back with God, and we've had drunks, and we've had... Uh, people being tasered and all kinds of things today. And I want to talk about this. This next song is about thrill seekers. And uh, I used to be a thrill seeker until <laughs> I met my lovely and gracious wife, Linda, who showed me that there were better things to do than trying to get myself killed. Which is good. I'm glad I was able to get <laughs> yeah, through to you on that. Me <laughs> too, because I wouldn't be here. Um, we've, we've had a long... I was long and lovely life together <laughs> we have met in college she read to me and got me out of a mess because i was uh trying to study for midterms and my books had not arrived in on tape and she and some of her friends kind of quadruple teamed me nan, nan was in on that yeah, yeah. we read to you that and they night. one of them would read till their voice got tired and they'd pass the book on to somebody else and they'd read and they right. just went around and around like that and uh, Lynn and I hit it off. Um, anyway, Thrill Seekers. This song, I don't know who wrote it, but it was sung by Roger Miller, of all people. You know, the King of the Road guy? Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's called uh, The Day I Jumped from Uncle Harvey's Plane.
Me and Oliver and Virgil were in the drugstore killing time when our eyes fell upon a magazine. I got to reading this article about skydiving and parachutes that said jumping out of airplanes is the thing. Now being raised down on a farm and always looking for adventure, I knew that I could figure out a way. I thought, well, Delmer Gill's got a parachute and Uncle Harvey's got an airplane. I said, call the boys together. Today's the day. I found out too late that what Harvey called an airplane wasn't much more than an engine and a wing. And I could feel my fear arising as Delmer packed the parachute, he kept telling me I was doing the right thing. Rhonda Blockman shook my hand as J.D. strapped me in that harness, and Tilden brought a jug and passed it around. I took one look at that parachute, that whiskey, and that airplane, and I tipped that bottle up and drank it down. I was drunker than Cooter Jones when they poured me in that plane. The engine coughed and headed for the clouds. But I was sober as a judge when Harvey opened up the door, and I'd never known my heart could beat so loud. I said, Harvey, I can't do it, as he kicked me out the door, and I wrapped my hands around the landing gear. And I was holding on real good till Harvey stepped upon my fingers and the boys all heard me scream from way up there. I thank God and Delmer Gill when my parachute finally opened. I thought, hell, there ain't no need to be afraid. And I went crashing through the hen house, scattering chickens and breaking eggs, and I kissed the ground and fainted dead away. Well now, friends, I've fought some battles, been shot at once or twice, and a dang near got run over by a train. But I cannot remember ever feeling more afraid than the day I jumped from Uncle Harvey's plane. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Kathy said, uh, I love the precise melody lead-ins and melody and harmony transitions you do. You make some really sweet and precise auto-harping look like it's kind of automatic, but clearly carefully arranged. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's uh, one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. Yes. Um, and this is just a stock Oscar Schmidt OS21C. I think it's an OS21C. We can't find a model number anywhere. <laughs> I I did what I, I didn't know better. Um, I had an auto harp. I've got one that I bought in 1982, and it needs strings and it needs felts and it needs all these things. And I decided maybe I should just get another one. And I bought one off of eBay. <laughs> and uh, folks, you don't do that. But I got lucky. This one had a couple of pegs that were twisted down a little bit and uh and all, but it's it's actually a very nice sounding uh nice sounding auto harp. And then I went nuts and now I've got five or six of these things. I got <laughs> and they're all Oscar Schmidt OS twenty one C's. Um I'm gonna convert one to a prism one of these days if I can figure out exactly which strings to let ring and 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 all i'm going to try to chase down hal weeks and see if he's still teaching and give him 50 bucks and see if he'll yes i want to um, try doing the do that. cutting it, the felt for you and that sort of thing yes do i the, that i really can't tell you how much i appreciate your willingness to try that we're going to give it a try um and hal's got pictures and charts but they don't do me any good i need to i need to do a face to face with him but thank you um uh, Thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much. Let's see here. Well, 
fortunately, Miss Linda did talk me out of all of my rafting and scuba diving and bronc busting and all the things you I really did. did do and I really things. did do this all those things. Kidding. And I've been blind since birth, by the way. Yeah. Um, the best way to... Bicycle riding. And yeah, motorcycles and... Tractor driving. Yeah, I, that well. too. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the best way to get me to do something was to tell me I couldn't do it because I couldn't see. And I would, like our buddy there, if I'd figure out a way. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, Kathy said, screeching as a rehab doctor, I was imagining you cutting felt. Ooh, awful. Oh, no, no. no. I, I'm going to t I'm going to take that chore uh, away from him and do it. No, there are things I can't do. Right. I can't drive a car. Up until about 25 years ago, I couldn't read print, but that's a thing of the past. But I don't see any way that I'm going to be able to cut felt. Um, I just don't. I learned uh, how to do. Strings. I have an engineer who might be able to design a pair of shears that would cut the notch the right way. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to give up on that and try to uh, <laughs> and get somebody else to, uh, to help me out. But we're both anxious to know what, it, what a prism would sound like. Yes. And what you'd be able to do with it. I, I, can't, I can't wait to, to, uh, to get one. Um, and so I'm going to... Philippa said, I'll teach you blacksmithing eventually. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> she said. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe when we were in college, I'd have tried it, but I don't know. I get nervous taking stuff out of the oven, let alone being right. around a forge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, since I have moved past my thrill-seeking youth, uh, I'm in a happy position where I am growing old. I have very good friends who who died young and and didn't get to do this um but i i did and and i'm trying to age gracefully and uh, accept the things i cannot change and all of that this song uh the earliest i've recording of it i heard was in 1938 and i don't remember who did it um the first time i heard it uh pete seeger did it back in the 60s it's called Old Age is Golden. Old age is golden, or so I've heard said. Old age is... How does it go? Now I can't find it. Old age is golden, and so I've heard said. But sometimes I wonder as I crawl into bed My ears in a drawer and my teeth in a cup My eyes on the table until I wake up As sleep dims my vision, I think to myself Is there anything more I should lay on the shelf? But though nations are warring and Congress is vexed I'll still stick around to see what happens next How do I know my youth is all spent My get up and go has got up and went But in spite of it all I'm able to grin And think of the places my get up has been When I was young my slippers were red I could kick up my heels right over my head When I was older my slippers were blue But still I could dance the whole night through Now I am older my slippers are black I huff to the store and I puff my way back But never a laugh I don't mind at all I'd rather be huffing than not puff at all How do I know my youth is all spent 
might get up and go has got up and went but in spite of it all i'm able to grin and think of the places my get up has been i get up in the morning and i dust off my wits i open the paper and i read the old bits and if i'm not there then i know i'm not dead so I eat a good breakfast and go back to bed. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. But in spite of it all, I'm able to grin and think of the places my get up has been. And think of the places my get up has been. Too old, too old, he's too old to cut the mustard anymore. He's a getting too old, he done got too old, he's too old to cut the mustard anymore. That's a song I sing in my, with the bluegrass group. I finally, after 45 years, got an invitation to sit in on a, a bluegrass group that plays at our senior center over here. <clears throat> got to play with them twice and now everything's closed yeah um so <laughs> we'll see i built a a resonator box i don't know kathy and ziggy if you remember a fellow by the name of bill palmer got on the cyber pluckers list talking about a resonator box that he used to play with a bluegrass group and uh my son built me one He's kind of a rough carpenter, so it doesn't it doesn't look real good, but boy, howdy, does it ever sound good. And I got it just before the, uh, I got it about 10 days before I was ready to play with the bluegrass group and uh, never got a chance to test it. So we'll see. Hopefully it'll, it'll help me to uh, it'll help play with the big boys. Yes, amplify. Mm. The auto harp tends to get drowned out by banjos for example especially well and, and other instruments it, it can get buried in a bluegrass group if we don't have it uh, you know it 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 amplified. can and you're not allowed to amplify no, i mean the <clears throat> the blue the two bluegrass groups right. that i play with are purists no amps don't care um so we'll see Let's see, what have we next? Ah, yes. Well, you know, we are all sequestered and and we're fighting this terrible scourge. Uh, Kathy says, yep, they really make an auto harp sound better and louder. For those that hold it up, it makes it a little awkward. Yeah, I don't see how they I would don't know do how that. You do either. Uh, at least not the one Bill designed. It's designed to be played on your lap or on a table. But I'll yeah. bet if you shaped one properly, you could you could do it. Especially if you could figure out a way to secure the auto harp with Velcro or something to the to the box. Um, but he's got a baffle in his and some holes across the front. Uh, Lynn, would you mind not at getting all. the one oh, off the? Uh, one right no, not that one. Okay, hold on. Get not the right if you would if you wouldn't mind get the other one off the. Uh, off the uh, lectern over there. I'll show you a picture. We had uh, a friend of my son's who's a cabinet maker built me one, but he didn't follow directions and he built it out of oak and it doesn't sound as good as... Uh... I'm trying to figure out the best. I'll bring it to you with the, uh, with the holes toward me. Yeah. And then you can just lift up the harp and... Set it down there. I know it. Hmm. See? <laughs> little technical experimentation, little set rearrangement here. Yes, yeah, sorry. That aid. There. Now we can scoot that. Yep. Okay. There. Now step that out. Okay, this is 
the one that looks the best, but it doesn't sound as good. And I will just give you a sample of it, but then I'm, I'm not going to play it. Uh, That's for you, Amber. Yes. That's my daughter's favorite <laughs> auto harp tune. Howard said, Foggy Mountain Breakdown, that's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You can do it, Howard. Kathy said, oh, wow, love this. Want to see this playing in the MLAG contest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. I'm blown away. Dan, you hear that? Yes. Dan, <laughs> we got we to gotta figure out how to get there next year. Uh, did did they cancel it or post yeah, it? No, they canceled it. They canceled, they canceled it, it wow. this year. I didn't know if they'd let me play with a resonator box or not. Um, Dan, uh, shoot me a quick comment and tell me how it sounds. Should I continue this way or should I put it down and go back to what I had? Dan's my audio guru. Yes, he's the guy. Um, I don't want the... Show to lag, but uh, uh, Dan said, Oh, yeah, and Nan Nan says, So great, love it. But okay. Dan said, Oh, yeah, all right. Well, then, uh, we'll uh, we'll just we'll just play with it for the rest of the concert. We don't have a whole lot to go here, um, and the other one sounds better than this. Do you want to switch them out? No, I don't want to. I don't want to subject these people to a lot of experimentation. Okay, this well. this one's good. Yeah, this uh, it does. This anyway, uh, <laughs> being sequestered and and shut down for this crisis, you know, it it has some side benefits. I know it's very inconvenient for everyone. We're all struggling with it, but it. It cuts down not only on the danger of the COVID virus, but it also cuts down on another. Uh, do you have a comment? Yeah, Dan said it's okay, but you've got the mic right over the harp, not near the box, so it really doesn't sound that different because we didn't have the mic in front of the of the box. Oh, I can try that. Let's see what happens. Thanks for y'all indulging us while we learn. <laughs> well, this is this is good because this way we know whether now. Okay. Do you need to lower it down to the level of the holes or just Yeah, that's what I need to do. Okay, cuz it's still up about I really can't reach it very well. Let's see here. All right, Dan, what I've done now is put it down about the level of the holes in front and I'm gonna bring it pretty close 
I guess this is probably making it into the shot, is it not? Well, I'm, I don't know because... Oh, that's right. We yeah, don't know. The, Switch over to OBS real quick and look. Let me see. Well, don't. Let's don't risk it. Um, it's, it is, but it doesn't cover up. You, it, it blocks the harp just a little bit right there, but not much. Okay. Maybe just All right, little, Dan, this is... Second, I have a comment. Ziggy Harp Dust. Until the virus stopped it all, I regularly went to a monthly bluegrass jam. Last autumn, I was finally allowed to plug in my auto harp, and now I'm heard among the banjos, fiddles, guitars, and mandolins. But bluegrassers over here may be a bit more open than those in the bluegrass motherland. Well, that's great, Ziggy. Yeah. I'm glad you got that chance. Well, and he's right. I, I think some people just have decided they're going to do it the way it was always done, and they and don't take a risk. And I wish they would. Some, you know. Well, I have I have two whatever. groups, and I think the senior citizens people would would let me know, because yeah. they like me. Yeah. They ask me to come back. Yes. Um, and they don't always do that. I've seen people sit in, and they said, "Well, thanks for playing with us." And well, and they give you turns, too. Then they give me turns, yeah. Right. They go around and give me turns. Anyway, um, let's try <laughs> to get back on track. All right, Dan, here, is, here it is with the, uh, with the mic in front of the resonator box about... Dan says, for whatever reason, we're now having a lot of breaks in the stream. This is just in the last 20 minutes, so mm. it's making it hard to get continuous feed. I wonder why that is. I don't know. We haven't changed. Well, any. people are the bandwidth changes. Uh, yeah. Dan, it's it's kind of like QRN on the QSO, you know. Um, anyway, let's try to get through this before the bandwidth totally breaks down. Um, as I said, being sequestered saves us, and you know, does everything it can to uh, keep us from the dangers of the COVID virus, but it also keeps us away from another danger. Ray Stevens sings about this one. It's called Hang Up and Drive. Right. He had a cheeseburger in one hand, French fries propped up on the seat, an ice cold cola in his cup holder, and to make the scene complete, he was searching for a pen and paper to make a note of things to take home. Still, he might have missed that concrete truck, but he was talking on his mobile phone. Hang up and drive, you're driving me crazy. Put down that phone, put both hands on your steering wheel. Hang up and drive, you're driving me crazy. That ain't no phone booth, son, it's your automobile. She had a vanity mirror up in her face, messing with her hair in her high rise four-wheel drive sitting way up in the air she had just put on her makeup plugged her curling iron into the dash but when she tried to dial her mobile phone that's when they heard the crash hang up and drive you're driving me crazy Put down that phone, put both hands on your steering wheel. Hang up and drive, you're driving me crazy. That ain't no phone booth, gal, it's your automobile. You see him out there, grim and scary, every Tom, Dick, Jane, and Mary. Driving with a phone stuck in their ear. Yelling, laughing, crying, talking. Most sane folks can't chew gum while walking. What makes them think they can talk on the phone and steer? 
Hang up and drive. You're driving me crazy. Put down that phone. Put both hands on your steering wheel. Hang up and drive. You're driving me crazy. That ain't no phone booth, folks. It's your automobile. That ain't no phone booth, folks. It's your automobile. We have a comment from Stephen Polunsky. Hey, Stephen. Thanks for coming by. He said, them's ham radio words. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And then back. Uh, Becky says, uh, my feet is completely smooth, and Ziggy Harp does, here I have no problems with the sound in the picture, and Amber, I haven't had any buffering on mine, and then while it went off and on on us, while you were playing, just, I was about to tell you, and then it, came, it was right back, so. Okay. We're we're having an issue every yeah. once in a while. Well, we're, we're going to try to get it in before the as atmospherics uh, <laughs> go against us. And Flip said, good one. <laughs> yes. Glad you liked it. That one too. Dan, what do you think? Um, and while we're waiting to find that out. Okay. I want to take you. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see here. Let me uh, refresh myself. I want to take you back to a, a simpler way of life. This song was written and sung by Lardo and Burley, the Moron Brothers. And it's called The Night That Pa Got Hung in That Electric Fence. We was born and raised way back in the sticks. Everybody used to call us hicks. We had a 20-acre holler nestled between two hills. We raised hogs and chickens and cows and a mule. We might have been hillbillies, but we weren't no fools. We had plenty to eat. Raised it all ourselves. Now the biggest problem that we ever had was a mule named Rodney kept everybody mad. No matter how hard we tried, we couldn't keep him fenced in. He'd get in the garden and Ma's flyer bed and paw would cuss and scratch his old gray head, settle his nerves with a drink and patch the fence again. Me and brother bought an electric fence, battery and all, set it up one night, gonna surprise her Pa, had to keep that mule in so Pa wouldn't get so tense. Pa got up that night. He was moving kind of quick. He was headed for the outhouse. The fog was really thick, and he must have lost his way because he got hung in that electric fence. Yeah, he must have went through a spiritual change. He don't look the same anymore. He works hard every day, goes to church every Sunday. No more loafing at the country store. Treats us all different, even quit chewing tobacco. Ain't cussed or drank ever since. The night that Paul got hung in that electric fence. We could hear Paul screaming, Come quick, sons! The Martians have got me. They're zapping me with their guns. He was easy to find. as sparks are flying everywhere. He said, Stand back, boys. I ain't a-joking. His body was jerking. His long johns were smoking. His hair stood straight up, and he looked really scared. We was trying to tell Paul what we'd done when we seen Ma coming with her old shotgun. She said, Step aside, boys. Ain't no Martian gonna get my man. Then that mule ran out of the barn with a bucket on his head. Ma gave him both barrels and filled him with lead. She thought he was a Martian. We couldn't make her understand. Yeah, well, he must have went through a spiritual change. He don't look the same anymore. 
Works hard every day, goes to church every Sunday. No more loafing at the country store. Treats us all different, even quit chewing tobacco. Ain't cussed or drank ever since. The night that Paul got hung in that electric fence. Well, we finally got him out when the battery went dead. He was stiff as a board when we got him in bed. Me and brother got scared and took that fence back to the store. They still swear up and down the Martians were there. And they ain't been able to do nothing with Paul's hair. And they can't figure out why the mule won't eat out of a bucket anymore. I have a few comments. Kathy uh, said that driving song reminds me of the time I took my blind college roommate who had always wanted to feel what driving was like out to a deserted shopping center parking lot one night. We were doing great until these red flashing lights came, let's hang on a minute, came roaring toward us. The officer asked for my friend's driver's license. I said, she doesn't have one, she's blind. He just shook his head and walked away laughing. Good cop. <laughs> yes, indeed. And then from Dan, I have, uh, I think, good, but the mic is perpendicular to the source. So you've got a lot of rejection. We're going to need to work this offline. For now, I'd go back to pointing the mic at the harp. And then we have a comment from uh, Joe Harrell. This is great. I've watched a few of your sessions watching from Abilene, West Texas. Hi, Joe. Thank you. Yes. I uh I didn't think I didn't think about people watching them um after the fact. Uh I'm glad you like them. Um Lynn, let's we have a great time. You want me to help move that thing? Yeah, let's over? reconfigure. Let's okay, let's take this let's put it back the way we had it when we started out. Yeah, just give us a minute, folks. I appreciate your indulgence while we ran that experiment. But you're right, Dan. We have the Yeah. Oh, it's heavy. It's not that heavy. Thank you. All right. We're going to go back to the way we had it before. Um, you're right, Dan. Um, let's, let's do that. Let's get together and figure out how to, uh, how to get this done. Let me put this back as close to the way I had it as I can. Uh, yeah, that's... This is the way I've always played it, and I'm, I'm very comfortable this way. Um, but anyway, thank you, everybody, and, and welcome, Joe. Uh, I'm, glad you, uh, I'm glad you like them. And uh, tell your friends about us. Yes. And if you're not already doing so, follow the page, and then you'll get... If you follow Auto Harp Down Home, you'll get in. You know, you'll get posts telling you when each one is. If you want to listen to them live and in person, we'd love to have you. Definitely love to. Come on down home. Oh. Um, we're just good old country folks. Um, and we like lots of company. And we do. We love we to have company. Love to have company. And and I love to play music for people and. And uh, Lynn would bring you refreshments. I would and be cooking. Cooking and, yeah. <laughs> and all of that. Um, write down a note. Okay. I want to end with y'all come. Um, I, I think everybody in uh, around here uh, that, that's listening and watching knows what a redneck is. But in case you don't, um, maybe Ziggy doesn't, but maybe it's a worldwide phenomenon. A redneck, the best way I can define it is a, a person, usually from the South, who is utterly lacking in manners and class. The kind of a guy who will pop open a beer at a funeral, you know, and then say, what, when everybody <laughs> looks at him. So uh, here's a song about one of those people. One of the more dangerous ones, actually. 
Uh, this was done by a, a guy named Cletus Judd. He does a lot of parodies of country songs the way Homer and Jethro did back in the 30s through the 70s. Well, Lord of mercy, I was in a mess. My wife run off with my TV set. Didn't bother me none that she had to go, except I was going to miss all my TV shows. I got... I looked up to heaven, got down on my knees, I cried, Dear Lord, would you help me, please? I need a new TV by tomorrow night, because Hulk Hogan's involved in a championship fight. In this corner? Well, I guess all that tithing must have paid off, because the very next morning she'd have seen what I saw. I reached in my coveralls for my inhaler. There's a big brown box sitting in front of my trailer. I used my truck key to cut open the box. I was hoping for a Sony or a Magnavox. I looked inside and said, Oh my gosh, this must be a new one called a Macintosh. My old TV screen was a whole lot wider. This and here come with its own typewriter. Had all the letters from A to Z. I guess you just type in what you want to see. I thought I typed in WWF, but that TV screen said World Wide Web. I broke out in a cold, cold sweat. I was the first redneck on the internet. He was the first redneck on the internet. A bona fide, countryfied cyber threat. He went online just one time. And now they'll never forget the first redneck on the internet. Well, I guess I should have taken my time, but I slammed that mouse up in four-wheel drive. Last time I did this much pointing and clicking, I had a twenty-two rifle shooting at chickens. <laughs> Got one. Then all that scared Lulu. <laughs> Then all of a sudden, it occurred to me the power I had with this fancy TV. I could get back at my ex-wife with a click of a button. I could ruin her life. I got the number for her MasterCard, bought a new lift kit, four mud tires. Got the number for her bank account, went ahead and closed that sucker out. Had a water and her tires shut, slap off, and... Sent an email to her dad blame boss, letting him know she told me she'd have his job by the end of the week. He was the first redneck on the internet, a bona fide countryfied cyber threat. He went online just one time, and now they'll never forget. The first redneck on the internet. Well, the moral of the story, as a matter of fact, the very next day I got my TV back. She said she'd like to come back as well. I told her to go straight to AOL. Well, I thank the Lord and UPS for dropping that box off at my address. You ever want to reach me, it won't take long. Type www.redneck.com. To reach the first redneck on the internet, a bona fide countryfied cyber threat. He went online just one time, and now they'll never forget the first redneck on the internet. He was the first redneck. On the internet. World Wide Web. Population 4 zillion. Salute! <laughs> See what I mean, Dan? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're prophetic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sometimes... Things just aren't what they seem. Here's a Ray Stevens song about that called The Ballad of Jake McCluskey. Every Friday evening when Jake McCluskey finished eating, 
he'd excuse himself and hurry off to his weekly lodge hall meeting. Till Ethel May, his wife, found out what no one could refute. That lodge hall was no lodge at all, but a house of ill repute. I don't think I've ever seen a woman get that mad before. She marched right up to that evil place and started kicking in the door. She said, I know you're in there, Jake McCluskey, you low-down philander and liar. Then she soaked her down with kerosene and set the whole dang place on fire. Well, a clap crowd had gathered up outside, but no one moved or spoke. Then a trembling voice from deep inside hollered, I smell smoke! Then the whole house started shaking. Folks began to scream and shout. The door blew off its hinges, Lord, and folks started spewing out. Oh, the flames of retribution could be seen for miles around. Oh, there never was so much confusion in our little Georgia town as the day that Ethel May McCluskey burned the lodge hall down. First Judge Oliver Wendell Justice came out running for his life, but he turned and ran back in the flames when he caught sight of his wife. Then self-ordained Elijah Bain, an evangelist of sorts, said he was down there saving souls in his pinstripe jockey shorts. Aha! Then out came the mayor and a banker we all knew. And the police chief and a sheriff and a deputy or two. When they asked the sheriff what he was doing in that den of degradation, he said, well, me and a couple of boys are just carrying out a little undercover investigation. Then the ladies of the evening came out in their lingerie. They were crying, we've lost everything, how we live, where we stay. Then a lawyer said, well, I'll help you file for welfare so you can eat. And you can all stay out at my place till you get back off your feet. <laughs> oh, the flames of retribution could be seen for miles around. Oh, there never was so much confusion in our little Georgia town as the day that Ethel May McCluskey burned the lodge hall down. Now where Jake McCluskey is today is anybody's guess. He came smoking out that back door in a state of complete undress. He went screaming off into the night. No one's seen him since, but I'll always recall how he mooned us all when he cleared the backyard fence. Oh, the flames of retribution could be seen for miles around. Oh, there never was so much confusion in our little Georgia town as the day that Ethel May McCluskey burned the lodge hall down. The day that Ethel May McCluskey burned the lodge hall down. Ethel May. Mercy sakes, girl. <laughs> I'm glad she isn't mad at me. <laughs> right. That's how I was thinking. <laughs> well, we've been drinking and skydiving and getting right with God. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting hungry. Here's a song called Junk Food Junkie by Larry Gross. I think it's the only hit the man ever had. I love that organic cooking And I always ask for more They call me Mr. Natural On down to the health food store I only eat good sea salt White sugar don't touch my lips And my friends are always begging me To take them on macro body trips Yes they are at night I take out my strong box that I keep under lock and key And I go back to my closet where nobody else can see 
And I open that door so slowly And I look out north and south Then I pull out a hostess Twinkie And pop it in my mouth Yes, the daytime I'm Mr. Natural Just as healthy as I can be But at night I'm a junk food junkie Good Lord, have pity on me Now at lunchtime you can always find me At the Whole Earth Vitamin Bar Sucking down a plain white yogurt in a hand-thrown pottery jar. Then I sip a little hand-pressed cider, have a carrot stick for dessert. Wipe my face in a natural way on the sleeve of my peasant shirt. Oh, yeah. But when that clock strikes midnight and I'm all by myself, I work that combination on the secret hideaway shell. I take out some Fritos corn chips, Dr. Pepper, and an old moon pie. Then I sit back in glorious expectation of a genuine junk food high. In the daytime, I'm Mr. Natural, just as healthy as I can be. But at night, I'm a junk food junkie. Good Lord, have pity on me. Now my friends down at the commune, they think I'm pretty neat. I don't know nothing about arts and crafts, but I give them all something to eat. I'm a friend of old you Gibbons, and I only eat homegrown spice. I got a John Keats autographed Grecian urn filled up with my brown rice. Yes, I do. All friends, but lately I have been spotted with a Big Mac on my breath. Stumbling into a Colonel Sanders with a face as white as death. I'm afraid someday they'll find me just stretched out on my bed with a can of Pringles potato chips and a ding-dong by my head. In the daytime, I'm Mr. Natural, just as healthy as I can be. But at night, I'm a junk food junkie. Good Lord, have pity on me. knows no bounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hope we're still connected. I believe we are, yes. It looks that way. Well, we're all going to die someday. And it's well to prepare for that. So, as the rednecks would say, we got your funeral planned right here. <laughs> oh, lay me down in forest lawn and silver casket. Put golden flowers over my head and silver basket. Let the drum and bugle core play taps while the cannons roar. And 16 liberated employees sell souvenirs from the funeral store. I want to go simply when I go. They'll give me a simple funeral there, I know. With a hundred strolling strings And topless dancers with golden wings Oh, take me when I'm gone to forest lawn And lay me down in forest lawn They understand there They have a heavenly choir And a military band there Just put me in their care I'll find my comfort there With sixteen planes and a last salute They'll drop across in a parachute I want to go simply when I go They'll give me a simple funeral there, I know. With a casket lined in fleece and fireworks spelling out rest in peace. Oh, take me when I'm gone for his lawn. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wildwood. Kindly leave a contribution in the pail. Be as simple and as trusting as a child would And we'll sell you the church in the dale To find a simple resting place is my desire To lay me down with a smiling face comes a little bit higher My likeness cast in brass will stand in plastic grass 
while hidden weights and strings tip its hat to the mourner filing past I wanna go simply when I go they'll give me a simple funeral there I know I'll lie beneath the sand with piped in tapes of Billy Graham oh take me when I'm gone for his lawn rock of ages left for me for a slightly higher fee oh take me when I'm gone for as long Amen Ben says another oops where's my oh here we go <laughs> sorry Ben says another that I love and Mary Williams is here and says hello there George hi Mary by golly, how are you? Hope things are going good your way. Yes. We got to get together. I say that every time, but we got to figure it out somehow. I don't know how, but I want to talk to you. Um, all right, we are nearing the end. Yes. Um, this is a song about a man kind of a mild-mannered guy who when confronted it's a it's a cowboy kind of a western song it was written by Shel Silverstein um and when he's when he's challenged by this gunfighter guy he he's got to fight to defend what's his and keep the woman he loves Philip has said another favorite on Forest Lawn. <laughs> Thanks, Philip. <laughs> And Mary says, going good, how about you and Lynn? And we are doing good, too. We are doing good. He'll be coming down the road at the break of day. His hat thrown back. His guns tied low. He's coming after Jenny wants to take her away but I ain't gonna let her go he boasted in town that she loved him he said she'd be his with the sun he said anyone trying to stop him would be a notch on his gun they say that he's headstrong and handsome his hairs blows wild and free all his hairs do actually and you know they got a whole lot in common cause he's much younger than me and he'll be coming down the road at the break of day his hat thrown back and his guns tied low he's coming after Jenny wants to take her away but I ain't gonna let her go he hasn't had much education he's never worked a day in his life and he's living with some older woman and they say She's another man's wife, but she loves him and needs him and wants him. She buys all his clothes and his meals, and when she finds that he's gone, she'll be praying. And Lord, I know just how she feels, because now he's coming down the road. It's the break of day. His hat's thrown back, his guns are tied low. He's coming after Jenny, wants to take her away. But I ain't gonna let her go. The sun's at his back and he's coming. A smile is curling his lip. Six gun is his right hand is slowly descending 
toward the six gun that rests on his hip. Then his lower lip starts to tremble. He starts crying as he looks up at me. I picked him up, said, son, you're four years old. You know, Jenny's only three. So come in the house for some cookies and milk. And he did, and his tears turned to smiles. I called up his mama and drove him back home. Now my Jenny's safe. Yeah, it gets me every time. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've gone a little long here, what with all the experimenting and everything we did. Yeah. Um, but, um, uh, I want to thank everybody for for coming by, especially the new people, but you old old standbys and old fans as well that support me every month it means a lot to us it does it we really love does doing this. and it's great to have our family around us oh becky says oh henry oh henry. <laughs> yes yes exactly beck exactly so <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you haven't read any oh henry i encourage you to do so uh -huh. uh, but really it, it means a lot and and i'm glad some of the uh some of the people from the Auto Harp group and from Cyber Pluckers came to visit. And uh, Kathy, thanks for stopping by if you're still with us, and Howard and, and Ziggy. Um, doggone it. What? Randall Rains never showed up. Oh, and you didn't do the thing. <sighs> and Are I you going to sing it anyway? And I didn't get to do the song. Oh. Uh, but it's just too good. Okay, one, one more. Yeah. This be your encore. Well, no, this is not. This is this. I'm just going to fit this in. Okay. Because I'm going to end with another. So there's two songs two to go, songs guys. Left. Okay. This song, this is called The Fridge Song. I found it on YouTube. I don't know who did it, but it's another one of those like the bricklayers. Okay, so get ready for it, guys. was a middle-aged businessman who had a very young wife. When younger men made eyes at her, it frightened him out of his life. For she was young and beautiful, and he was old and gray. And when they first got married, they made love five times a day. I'm exaggerating. It was only three and a half. Gradually, as time passed on, things were looking bleak. It was all that he could do to make love once a week. One day while at the office, a good friend gently said, I think that I should warn you, there's a stranger in your bed. started as a rumor, but I know now it's a fact. If you go home right now, you're gonna catch him in the act. He quickly put his coat on and rushed right out the door. Straight to his, to his apartment, it was on the 18th floor. rushed into the bedroom. She was unclothed on the bed. I know you've got a man in here and I'll find him, he said. He searched and 
he, he searched in every closet and behind every door. Let's try that again. He searched in every closet behind every blind in every nook and cranny but nothing did he find. This is my first time ever doing this, folks. You'll have to cut me some slack. He opened up the kitchen window and quickly looked around. And far below he spotted something on the ground. A man was grinning up at him. You could see the anger on his face as he shouted, There you are! A man was grinning up at him in a red sports car. He, he grabbed the refrigerator and threw it out with force. It landed on the sports car and killed the poor man, of course. At the pearly gates of heaven, a bewildered man appeared. The angel looked straight at him and said, That's really weird. I mean, really, really weird. supposed to be in heaven yet this is not your year so take your time and tell me exactly why you're here I was sitting in my sports car with a smiling face he said when a huge refrigerator came and hit me in the head Suddenly, out of nowhere, the businessman appeared, the businessman. He said, can someone help me? I don't know where I am. You're at the pearly gates of heaven, said the angel with a smile. Give me all your details and I'll put them in my file. The businessman hung his head and, looking somewhat embarrassed, said, I really love my wife. I know now I should hate her. I just killed her lover boy with our refrigerator. I threw it out the window. What else could I do? But the fridge cord wrapped around my leg and I got dragged out too. The angel looked at the businessman, frowned and shook his head. You can't go into heaven, sir. It's hell for you, he said. And sudden and suddenly appeared a very young and handsome man. He looked the angel in the eye and said, Hi, my name's Dan. Well, Dan, said the angel, looking most sincere, tell me what a nice young man like you is doing here. Dan's face turned red. Beads of perspiration broke out on his brow and he made the following statement. I was sitting in this fridge, I said, he said, feeling very cold. Someone threw it out of the window 
and now the story's told. Not very well, but it was told. <laughs> Funny. Did you say that was your first time playing? That's something? the first time I played it in front of people. I've, I've practiced it a few times, but I only found it like two or three days ago. So yeah. you will have That's to. That's a, uh, a lot of. Uh, but I had to do it. Uh, I. Uh, uh, yep. I. Uh, okay. I have. Um, Linda said, thanks for a wonderful show. And Amber said, awesome show. That's when we were saying yeah. we were getting ready. To uh, we are. This is the last song. Mm. This is a song, and I. it's kind of a, an invitation. Dan, Dan Wilking said, good story. Dan said. <laughs> Glad you liked it, Dan. Here's a... <laughs> Here's a, the the last song. It really is. It's called Y'all Come. When you live in the country, everybody is your neighbor. On this one thing you can rely. They'll all come to see you and never ever leave you saying, Y'all come to see us by and by. Y'all come. Y'all come. Y'all come to see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come see us now and then. Kin folks coming, they're coming by the dozen, eating everything from soup to hay. And right after dinner, they ain't looking any thinner, and this is what you hear them say. Y'all come. Y'all come, y'all come to see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come to see us now and then. Grandma's a wishing they'd come to the kitchen and help do the dishes right away. They all start leaving, and even though she's grieving, you can still hear Grandma say, Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come see us now and then. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come. Y'all come see us when you can. Y'all come, y'all come, y'all come see us now and then. Y'all come see us. Yes. Come down home visit. Come down home visit. And we will end. see you next time. Sorry, it was quiet for so long. That's okay. I ended it.